What's going on guys? Nick Lessigore here, Exit 12 Homebrew in the house. And I'm here with a special brew day and I'm not alone. Maybe I am in person, but certainly not alone alone. On the computer, chilling with my boy Billy. Let's go snag him. There's the kid. There's my boy. We're doing a collab today. Billy from Gam Dude Brewing. We're doing a collab today, uh, an Italian Pilsner. I don't wanna give up everything that's in this beer, but I will give some goodies, if you will. Um, this is an Italian Pilsner. This is the first time I'm gonna be step mashing on the Bruzilla, so this is gonna be a fun little experiment to see how well this goes. I did perform an ice water and boil test uh, earlier this week, and my temperatures from the wrapped temperature thermometer to the unit itself are as in tune as they've ever been, about two or three degrees off consistently, which is good. Right now, 147.2 to 143.5, and the heater just came on because we are mashing in at about 147 to get to 144. Um, and I'll go over that in just a second, but first, uh, the malt bill. We're going in with Pilsner from Wireman, Carapils from Wireman, acidulated malt from Wireman and honey malt from Brees. Very simple. Uh, I guess this is in, in comparison to other Pilsner malt bills. It's probably pretty elaborate, but that's what Billy and I settled on because, you know, we just love honey malt. And the truth is, is that Billy makes amongst the best Pilsners on a homebrew level that I've ever had. So he sent me a box a few months back and a bunch of traditional styles and I absolutely, <laughs> I absolutely ran through them. So uh, the hot bill, we're gonna be adding Saz throughout this beer, throughout this boil. So Saz, and then what makes it different, the Italian Pilsner part, I guess, is the dry hop. And we're actually going to be dry hopping at different times with Citra hop hash. I'm really excited about this. I sent him some hop hash as part of his box uh, for Secret Santa which we do at BrewTubers every year. We do a secret Santa, www.brewtubers.com. Come join us, join the club. Maybe uh, you can get yourself a secret Santa box. I included Citra Hop Hash, so he has some Citra Hop Hash. I'm gonna add it at the beginning of fermentation because we've read that in doing my research that the earlier you dry hop, the more clear a beer is. He's gonna add it near the end of his. Uh, and so what we're gonna do, as we know, we added a bunch of salts to this. I'm going in with Lalamond Diamond Lager Yeast on this uh, because I've read great things about how it cleans up, specifically on the sulfur end. In terms of the, the mash schedule, uh, the mash schedule, we are gonna go with 144 degrees for 40 minutes. We're then gonna go with 160 degrees for 40 minutes and then hit our diastole rest at 170. So I'm gonna document how this unit does with the changes I've made to it with the ice water and boil test, I'm gonna see how it does with temperature and I'll be documenting some of that. Uh, primary, uh, we are gonna go in on about three days, hitting it in primary. And then the way, the way we're basically gonna do it is uh, for every degree Play-Doh, we're gonna lager it. So we're looking at about an 11 week lagering period on this. I've read with Diamond Lager, you don't necessarily need to do that, but I don't care, I'm gonna do it anyway. I think it's gonna be fun, I've always wanted to brew a traditional beer like a Pilsner with a little Exit 12 Gam Dude twist on it. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go mash in now and get things going. Dude, one take Jake. One take Jake, baby, F with me. Woo! All right. We got a little bit of a late start, thanks to your boy being a little hungover and the grain mill not working, but it's just before nine o'clock and we are ready to go. Here's the malt right here. It's an awful picture, but that is what it is. Got the malt, and now it is time for us to mash in. Hold on one sec. All right. Let me see if I can record this real quick. more live. Oh, record. Record to the cloud. 
the recording? Yeah. All right. Have you mashed in yet, Billy? Yeah, I'm mashing in. Oh, all right. All right, let's go. Am I on the world famous Exit 12 podcast? I mean, uh, YouTube <laughs> right now? Uh, you will be when the video posts for sure. <laughs> and hopefully the footage for your video comes out well too. All right. Oh man, Billy, this smells so good, buddy. Doesn't it? Oh, the smell of this mash could cure any hangover you have. And this, I mean, in truth, this unit is so big. I could really, this, this grain bill's like 10, 11 pounds or whatever. I could just throw it in. Uh, we are already down to 143. No, 144. Yeah, 143, dropping a little bit. Trying to keep, keep it up. Should probably go a little bit faster. Oh, yeah. oh easy money, Billy. Don't rush it, man. Loggers are all about patience. Is that the key? Yeah, because you're done. Well, I got a huge unit, dude. I mean, this thing's gigantic. But I'm not done. I still got to mix it in and stuff. I just don't want the temp to drop too far. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. God damn, this smells good. All right. Okay, so we are currently sitting, the wrapped temperature thermometer is at 140.7, and the differential on the unit is at 152.6. So still experiencing very much some of the same temperature issues that I did before I did that ice water boil test and it's not turning on. So oddly enough, sitting at 144.6 on the wrapped, the, uh, the screen just has to catch up to it. But if that's the case, at least on the wrapped, we nailed our mash in. I'm gonna let this sit for 10 minutes. And then I'm gonna do, uh, turn on the pump and test for pH. I just swung the camera around 147.7 to 153.1 and I don't have the uh, recirculation on because I wanna, what I'd really like to do is let it sit for a while. You can let that mash, let that grain bed settle. We'll see how high this thing gets. Okay, I just turned the pump on. As you can tell, the differential override turned on. The wrap says 139, the built-in says 145. We're gonna let this run for about three minutes and then I'm gonna pull off a sample for pH. 
Okay. I have a stuck mash. So now I have to mix it. Stuck mashes are definitely frustrating, but I think that's part of the, when you let it sit for 10 minutes, no rice hulls. Oh yeah, this thing's bricked up. Uh, don't want the pump to run dry. Okay, we're halfway through the 144 mash. Currently, this is probably the best I've had it at this point. We're at 146.3 on the wrap temperature thermometer and 141.5 on the unit. I'm starting to think that maybe the wrap temperature thermometer does more harm than good. I don't know, of all the years I've had all-in-one systems, it's never been overly important for me to measure the top of the mash temp. But with that said, if the probe in the unit isn't accurate, then you probably want the wrap temperature thermometer. So who knows? I moved it back down. I had it at 150 because the differential override kept shutting the unit off and I was sitting at 140. So I moved it from 144 to 150. It immediately shot up to 150. So I had to move it back down to 144. As you can expect, or as you could imagine, this is a little frustrating, but I'm brewing with Billy. So all is right in the world. All right, currently sit sitting at 144. The differential override is on, but the built-in's at 139. I will say throughout this mash so far, we have probably about 10 minutes to go in the 144 uh, first mash before we switch, increase it to 160. Yeah, got about 13 minutes left. I will say so far in this unit, doing the uh, performing the ice water and boil test, my temperatures are not nearly as far off. I'm looking at about a five degree difference right now. Whereas before I did the ice water and boil test, I could have been up as high as 12 degrees off from the wrap temperature thermometer to the built-in. So that's an upside. Um, it took to get to 144, it took about 15, 20 minutes. 25 minutes anyway, which is frustrating because if you are brewing a Pilsner and you're trying to get your temperatures spot on, um, waiting 25 minutes post mash or 25 minutes into the mash to get to your temperatures is, is uh, a little baffling. So after this is done, uh, about 13 minutes left, as I mentioned, I'm gonna bump up the temperature step two to 160 degrees for 40 minutes and we'll see how that goes. Okay, Billy's not that far behind me. We are now gonna start step two. I'm gonna bump this up from 144 to 160. We'll see, <clears throat> we'll see how it heats. I ended up finishing at 144 degrees, which is what I wanted for the first step. So I can't really, I guess I can't complain that much, but the temperature consistency is important to me. So we're gonna bump this up to, one, uh, to 160 for step two. And what I'm gonna do now, oh man, Billy, this thing's coming through super clear. I'm gonna take myself a little sample because I can, because I get the easy dents. So I'm gonna take a gravity reading here at the end of the first step to see how we're doing with conversion. And I'm gonna do the same thing at 160. Let's see how this turns out. How about you, Billy? Looking good. I don't have the sweet easy dents, but. <laughs> it's all right, buddy. I'll let you know what I end up at. Okay, I have my easy dens out. I got my app right there. 
I did not cool this sample. I'll pull some through. I'm going to turn it on. And now we're going to take a sample. Or we're going to take a reading. Oh, could not find device. Well, that's not good. Oh, never mind. <laughs> okay, currently sitting at 1.048. Ka bang. There she is, 1.048. 49, 1.049 at a 70 degree temperature reading. So that came down really quick. So. We're gonna hit the mash for another 40 minutes. I'm gonna save this. Save to default batch. And uh, we'll take another reading at the end of the next step. Okay, I just hit my second step. Billy's a little bit far behind, uh, farther behind. Billy, what are you, uh, what's your temp at right now? I'm at 153, Nick. Yeah, so you're not that far behind. So I'm at 160 here on the temp thermometer, uh, 156 on the built-in. So 40 second step starts now. All right, Billy, I just, uh, I'm about halfway through my, my mash. Where are you at? I have about 10 minutes in and I'm sitting at a comfortable 160, Nick. <laughs> Comfortable 160, is that right? Yep, I'm locked in. How about you, bud? <laughs> I'm at 162, man. It's looking so far so good. Uh, well, differential override just turned on. So now I'm at 170 on the build-in and 160 on my unit. So we'll see. I mean, now, I'm how's, bottom, uh, how's, how's the unit with the higher temp as opposed to the lower temp? Much the better. The higher temp seems to be, it seems to be doing much better, yeah. Yeah, nice. you got it, buddy. Yeah, you're killing it, dude. Killing awesome the game. <laughs> okay, we're halfway through the second step at 160. I will tell you so far, this unit at 160 holds much, much better. I am about three degree difference, four degree difference from the temperature thermometer and the building. Uh, I've been as high as 161. It hasn't gotten any higher than 161 on the wrap temperature thermometer, so I'm very happy about that. Um, 159.5, 159.2, Looking good so far. So we're gonna continue to monitor this. The next step is 170 for 10 minutes. Okay, I am at 160 now. We just hit that 40 minute mark for end of step two. We're gonna bump this bad boy up to 170 for our diacetyl rest for 10 minutes. And I'm also gonna take another sample to see what, if our gravity has changed at all. Boy, this thing is crystal clear, buddy. Mine too. Look at that. Okay, sitting at 1.068, it says, Billy, which is very high. 1.069. We were aiming for a 1.070. Well, it's coming down. The temp's coming down and it's adjusting. Oh yeah, the lower the temp goes, the higher the gravity goes. 1.071 it says. 
Okay, it says 1.072. We'll probably keep it there. Uh, but we do still have to... Oh, it says temperature is out of range. That's why. So we'll let this thing continue to get down and see once the temperature is in range. I thought it had ATC on it. I could be wrong, but we'll let it sit for a little bit. And we'll see what we end up coming to once the temperature is in range. Okay, the temp is still coming down, but we are within range and we're sitting at 1.072. So that's what we're going to go with for our first runnings. 170 has been reached. 10 minute diacetyl rest. Now we're going to pull the malt pipe. We're going to do some sparging. Billy, where are you at? I'm sitting at 162 right now, still ramping up to my 170 rest. Oh, damn, really? Do you want me to slow down? No. Keep going, man. Good, because I wasn't gonna. I know. Oh. Oh. Oops. I'm a speed racer, you know what I'm saying? It's that, that 220. That 220 volts got me. Oh yeah. Make sure you put a link in the description for the video on installation of that hoisting system. Great video. Oh yeah. Yeah, you like that video? <laughs> that didn't make that video did not make me look incompetent at all. All right, so we're going to sparge. Get up to pre-boil, seven and a half gallons, 60 minute hot drop. Saz. Let's go. All right, we're coming up to a boil right now. I'm gonna take a sample from my Easy Dens, which is a piece of equipment that Dave Big Dog didn't want to buy because he's a cheap uh, person. I almost just swore. Kids show. I'm gonna take a sampley samp here. Waiting for Nick to buy it for Christmas. That should be good enough. And 60 minute hop edition. We get some Saz. Gonna throw these in loose. All right, let's get the boil started. This is the sample for pre boil. We finished with 28 liters pre boil, so we hit that. We're looking for 1.042 for pre boil gravity. We'll see where we end up. All right, we're 10 points up, <laughs> 1.053. Although it says temperature's out of range, so we'll let that come down and we'll see how high that goes. Okay, so at 85 degrees, that is when the auto temperature out of range prompt disappears. We are looking at 1.056. And that's what we're going to stick with for our pre-boil. We were shooting for 042, so very high. Okay, we're 45 minutes into the boil. We're adding more Saz. More Sazer. Oh, man. God. This is going to be a fantastic beer. I'm very excited about it. How about you, Billy? Where are you at? Just coming up on a boil, uh, pulled the pre-boil sample, and I'm sitting at uh, 1048 for pre -boil. boy. All right. And that's with the, the mash water, the, or the yep. um, sparge water, like yep. pre-boil? All right. Full, full volume pre-boil. Okay, here we go. More size going in at 30 minutes. We are lacing this beer with size. Okay, we have a 10 minute mark. We have a, uh, some more size. 
and some yeast nutrient going in. As you can tell, the jaded wart chiller is hanging in the unit to sanitize it. Now you may be saying, wow, this is a lot of SAS. You're adding a lot of SAS, but here's the thing. The SAS alpha acid content is 2.2%. So while it would seem like we're adding a lot of hops, we're actually pretty much in a great uh, uh, bitterness point. So in terms of the bitterness level, uh, I'm happy with it. 2.2% alpha acids means a lot of hops being added. Five minute addition now of a quarter or a half a tablespoon of Irish moss. We're really trying to make sure that this beer is crystal clear. Okay, this is the end of the boil. You know what that means. Flame out hops, gonna press pause. More saz, you guessed it. Ah, got a... So what I'm gonna do now is cool this beer down, turn on the chiller, and we're gonna cool it down to 50 degrees. And with the temp outside, hopefully that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Okay, it's time to transfer into the fermenter. Let's see if I have to turn on the pump or not. Let's see if it's clogged. Oh, it's clogged, all right. <laughs> all right, this may be a tough situation. One second. Okay. I'm gonna to try to catch some of the if it the pump pulls it through. Try to catch some of this. Oh yeah. We are stuck. Okay, so what I'm gonna to try to do now to get the clog out is blow some CO2 through and see if that'll help. I have no idea if this is a good idea or not, but the pump is clogged. There's about six ounces of Saz hops in there, and I can't think of anything else to do what to do. So open it up. CO2 up. It pretty much defeats the purpose of the beer settling for 10 minutes. <laughs> but, but let's see if that works. All right, it did work. Easy peasy. And I don't have to use the pump. There we go. Again, um, defeats the purpose of the beer settling for 10 minutes, but it is what it is. I was not trying to lift the unit up and play with the tubing and stuff. And that, even that is gonna rustle the beer anyway. So here we go, we're transferring. Okay, so I transferred into the fermenter and Billy and I are discussing how much water do we want to add my og is at 069 billy's is at 053 so to match billy's og what we want to do is basically the calculations i don't know if tough to see now you know, moving that the calculations basically point out if we have 069 as our current gravity our wanted gravity is 053 the current volume is five gallons water to add one and a half gallons, which I do not have that space in my fermenter. So all I have, the space I have in my fermenter, I can probably fit another gallon in there of water. So doing some calculations to see, adding about a gallon of water will put us at 0 0.57. Zero five seven 
instead of 0, 0.53, 3 will put us at, if we hit our, our OG, our FG, it'll put us at 5.6%, which I would take. Or I could even stop fermentation early. But that is uh, what I think we're going to do. What are your thoughts on that, Billy? Adding a gallon of water, shooting to get to 0, 0.57, 0, 0.58, leaving us with a 5.6% beer on my end. I think that's a bold move, Cotton, and you should go for it. All right. That's what we'll do. Let's try it out. Okay, it's pitch time. Taking a look here. This is the tilt. Nailing it. 1.051, 51 degrees. I'm gonna let this sit up here. Throw on a nice little charge on it. And now, <clears throat> the star of the show, until we add the Citra Hop Hash, Diamond Lager Yeast from Lalamond. The Lallies. <clears throat> I'm gonna hit it. The good thing about the Diamond La Lager Yeast, I've heard a lot of great things about it. So hopefully it finishes nice and clean. And I don't run into any issues. But what we're gonna do is cut this bad boy open. What I also think I'm gonna do is after talking to Billy, I think I'm gonna order another package and throw it in. Two packages is probably fair. All right. Gonna throw it in. Bam. Hit it on top. And then I'm also gonna add three drops of firm cap just to make sure the fermentation stays at bay. All right, so we're all done with the brew day. That was some fun, huh? It was the best. I learned a lot from you, Nick. Thanks for letting me brew with you today. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're the worst. Uh, so let's talk about the brew day itself. And, and I'll start and then you can go kind of do your thing. Uh, easy brew day. Had a few minor issues, water spills, things like that. But overall for me, it was a pretty solid brew day. I'm thinking that the place where I got the grain uh, maybe gave me too much grain, and that's why I ended up so high on gravity. I didn't, um, the, the base grain, I did not weigh out. It came, and I just threw it in the bucket. Uh, I had a couple of issues with my mill, not milling in the morning. All said and done, I, I'm really excited about the brew day. I think I'm going to grab one more package of that diamond, uh, Lalaman diamond lager yeast, and then I think uh, I'm just going to be nervous the whole time because I've never brewed a lager or fermented one before. But um, about three days into fermentation, I'll add the Citra hop hash. And uh, I'm really excited for this beer. Great collab. Billy knows his stuff. And uh, he's probably one of the better brewers in the club, to be honest. Uh, awesome. He does a really, really good job with classic style. So I was very fortunate to be able to uh, collab with him. How'd your day go, Billy? I'm really happy with how my brew day went, too. Um... Didn't really have any problems, but at the end, I had a little issue with a connector on my uh, O2 tank. And, you know, just like any other brew day, it's always something. You just figure it out, you know, move along. Got everything aerated up, pitch the yeast, diamond lager, just like you. Um, I don't think we're going to have anything to worry about, bud. This is going to be a delicious Italian Pilsner. <laughs> Good, man. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm really excited, too. I think for me, um, you know, being nervous about the fermentation is what it is. I think, you know, when it comes to the Citra Hop Hash, Billy's going to add his in towards the end of his fermentation process. I'm adding mine in same amount. I'm adding mine in uh, towards the beginning, and we'll kind of test them and see how they turn out. Everything else was the same, though. 
And the gravities, uh, after I added an entire gallon of water, <laughs> the gravities ended up being pretty close. So, yeah, I hit my numbers pretty much a little bit high, but not as high as yours. But uh, yeah, that should be should be good. Can't wait to taste it. Listen, you join a club like Brewtubers. These are the kind of opportunities you get. You know what I mean? To collab with great brewers like Nick here and and trade beers and just have a good time. This has been a great brew day. Thanks again, Nick. Yeah, I'm really excited. I can't wait. Uh, it was so much fun brewing with Billy. Check out the club if you can. Help support the sponsors if you can. And uh, that's it for now. We'll probably do, maybe Billy and I will hop on Zoom and do a little taste test side by side. You know, I'll have his, he'll have mine, and we'll test them out a little bit. I think that'll be a little bit of fun. Oh, yeah. Can't wait. That's it for now. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, keep in touch with what we're doing. I mean, this is going to be a really fun beer and hopefully no sulfury off flavors. Well, hi,